Hey y'all, welcome back to the podcast. We lit, we in this bitch. <laughs> we lit, we in this bitch. It's episode four. Hey, these stupid whores. Hey, they thought they was gonna stop my flow, but nah, bitch, no way. If you're new to the show, welcome. I'm Soleil. This is Aberrant Alien, episode four. A show where I am basically being the alien, exposing people and showing my different perspectives to what goes on in this crazy ass fucking simulation and if you don't know what that word aberrant means it is just departing from an accepted standard so if you're the type of person that follows all the rules and you take pride in it i am so perfect and i do nothing wrong in society yeah this ain't what you should be watching because i bet you're gonna have a lot of conflict with what i say all right but you know open-minded people welcome if you weren't here for last episode i'm gonna be using a bit of vocab so that i don't get flagged so one of the words that i use to describe the elites and the very powerful people who are doing bad things that they shouldn't be doing i say concealers so they'll think i'm talking about makeup yeah look at this little bitch she's just doing her makeup talking nobody cares about her whatever not watching this video right really we're talking on some real shit. they don't need to know that okay so pie parties what is domino's and papa john sell okay right so take that word and add gate like what you would need to open to get into the neighborhood right what domino's and Papa John sells plus the word gate. Look that up, not on Google, on DuckDuckGo. And what you find, now you will know what I mean when I say pie parties, okay? That means that there are horrific acts involving children going on at these events and a lot more other things which I might talk, tap into on another episode, okay? So I also want to explain the look that we have going in this ghetto fabulous sign that I have in the back. So this sign was brought from my old apartment and I could have sworn, I swear before I pressed record that this shit was bright as hell and it looked so pretty. Even with this lighting and everything, now it just looks so ghetto. Like you know when you pop a glow stick, it's just so vibrant at first and then it looks like that. Yeah, it's dying. And you know what? It's just going to be there because it is what it is. But the look for today is inspired by C China because we got the bikini top going. But I wanted to add a bit of bougie in and make it not look like a bikini top. So I put this jacket uh, over it with these pants. I'm going to show you all. All right. I just be throwing stuff together, but this is the outfit I chose. Let's get into the topics for the day. The first thing I wanna talk about is people who have money are surrounded by enablers and yes men. So if you have ever been in a room with wealthy people or people who have status or are supposed to be high value in society, right? And I think my version and definition of high value is different than what society's version is and i feel everyone should have their own definition of what is high value because what somebody values is not going to be the same as another person so what they might find is compatible as far as what that person values will be different because everybody values different things you can't put your standards base your standards and what you think is good for you or whatever the fucking case may be based on what society thinks is high value now the society high value is people who have money who have like followers who have influence people who have reach within their communities and stuff and most of it is practical and achievement based stuff that's kind of materialistic not so much as how people are on the inside as far as how they treat people because there's a lot of shitty ass people who are considered very high value. They have a lot of influence and they have a lot of crowd control and you know people flocking to them. So all the role models and all the idols and shit like that are not good people. So I need y'all to immediately stop connecting the two. That just cause someone is a celebrity, that they're perfect, that they're a God and an angel. You know how when people get 
like famous or they go TikTok famous or whatever, even like E. Kane, we know what she went viral for. We know that she is famous for what she has done in her past and her sexual ways and stuff. So why do you expect that once she finally gets influenced and becomes an influencer, that she's going to all of a sudden become this angel that has to be different? No, she's going to keep being the same crazy ass girl she been being because that's what got her where she is. And she even made a TikTok that's pinned at the top of her page that says that like why do y'all think when somebody get a lot of followers they gotta be like this the reason they think that is because people automatically put influencers and celebrities and people who have status and stuff and that can be role models they automatically make them role models they automatically see them as gods and that they should be put on this pedestal y'all need to stop putting people who don't deserve that type of praise and that type of backing up because first of all y'all become like ride or die and go hard for people who wouldn't do the same for you don't even know you exist and i'm not saying you can't support people but i'm saying like people be overlooking everything that someone does just because they're a celebrity because they got money because they got clout this person could be in the headlines for doing some real fucked up ass shit and everybody would just act like it's nothing. They may be mad a little bit one day, but if it's, that person has enough influence, no one will care. It might be the trending topic once, but that's it. And they'll just forget about it. That person will take a little bit off and they'll just hop back up and keep on going. No one really holds anyone accountable. Now, I ain't gonna lie. It is a couple people who didn't actually been canceled. Like, it's just, they really have been canceled. Like, Daniel Caesar... He really got canceled, but he came back with a nice little song. You know, I like that song. So, who hurt you? That's my jam. Other than that, it's like, you know, the baby. he back. He took some time off now. That was probably what his PR told him to do. And then he got back on the scene and came in hot. I don't know how to dance with Colleen. Make the ghetto bitch put the hands on the knee. Make the ghetto put the hands on the knee. Right? Everyone has had their problematic moments and done some humiliating shit or done some bad shit or whatever it got canceled but now they back and they just better like i don't hate chris brown but he's done a lot of controversial things so much so to where it's like bruh <laughs> but people go hard behind him like he's not losing maybe he does lose so and so million followers even like doja cat they talked about how she lost I don't remember the number, but a significant amount of followers. And it's like, bro, compared to what she has, that ratio isn't even that big of a deal. And it's a bunch of followers and stands that she has that will never leave her side, no matter what she does. So I feel like, and I said all that to say that ties into the topic. That is the exact reason why these people feel they don't have to answer to nobody, that they don't have to abide by no type of moral code or just even really give a fuck because they feel untouchable they feel unvinc invincible invincible like there's no way that if even if you stop fucking with me even if they stop fucking with me i still gonna have all these people going behind me which is why these people can become bullies because they'll have like i've heard the term flying monkeys where they'll just go do whatever you know they could send their freaking like swarm the show if y'all haven't seen that go watch it it's amazing but just a prime example, the Beehive, that show was about them and how hard they are going to go for Beyonce. So I'm not specifically saying that she is exactly like what I'm talking about, but I'm not saying she's not either. Because do I know her personally? No. But I have definitely come into encounters with some people who are very, very famous and have a lot of influence, a lot of power. And majority of the time that that is just what fuels this fucking disgusting ego it's like the ego is just y'all know on willy wonka in the chocolate factory when it was that one kid who went and, and ate all that chocolate just ate it up and that nigga was over fucking indulging in that chocolate and he turned into like extremely big and round and he almost i think did he blow up or something or he got sucked into the little tube or whatever but um <laughs> yeah he that's that's how it be that ego be just too inflated and it's because nobody be checking them and then a bitch like me come around and i'm like i don't care who you are because again when you have tapped out of the matrix and you don't really care so much about certain statuses and titles and 
that stuff is not as important to you when you see the bigger picture and when you have already kind of realized that this is kind of like a game. This is like somebody becoming king in The Sims or what's a world that is like interactive and a bunch of people play in. Like, you know, them online games that you would play when you was a kid, like Woo's World and stuff, and you would go like IMVU and meet with other people. It's like somebody becoming level 100 in that game and getting fame and they're super popular in that game. And they want you to bow down to them and respect hierarchy and stuff. And you're just like, bro, this is a game. Like, you're doing too much. That's how I'll be feeling. I'll be like, okay. Like, first of all, a lot of these award shows and all of these, like, um, ways that people are gaining accolades is not even because of their talent. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not hating and saying that people who are on the charts and people who are really successful are talentless. No. But what, but how you get on the charts is not by talent, right? It's based on who's willing to go how far. How far are you willing to go? You know, and it's not even also about those people being like bad people. Because you know how I talked about how to get into it. If you watch my music industry video on my other channel, I'll link it below. Or it's on this channel, actually. Um, if you're on Spotify, I'll somehow show the link. But in that video, I talked about why the music industry does what they do. But on my TikTok, I talked about like how you are to get initiated into the concealers. Okay. And so when I talked about that, I dis I described how just sometimes they're naive and they're really desperate. They find people because a lot of times these musicians and artists, they be actual creators, earth angels, very high vibrational, very talented. If you don't know the energy of Pisces, Pisces and just in general creativity is it's like channeling. When you're rapping, you're channeling. When you're writing music you're channeling you know all of that is more spiritual than you know so these are high vibrational artists and people who are very very talented and meant to spread light they have a great purpose here but it's like the concealers will know that and they will come seeking and scouting for those people when they see them and they'll present it like oh i'm about to give you this amazing opportunity and everything and there's a fine print and there's a catch where you have to do X, Y, Z. If you want to know what X, Y, Z is, go watch that TikTok that's there on my um, Goddess Pluto channel. And that is basically what I mean. Like, yeah, they're very talented, but they'll get kind of manipulated into these deals where they are doing sick things for things that really don't matter. Like money and stuff is important to survive in this society, in the game. But at the end of it, it's not worth what you give up. And what it is that you lose as far as your integrity and integrity, as far as family, as far as your connection to source and spirit and your freedom, because it looks glitz and glam. But, oh, trust me, there is a lot of dark ish going on at these pie parties, at these Hollywood parties. And again, I'm not going to get too deep into it because I really do not want this video to get, you know, any type of flack. But if you pick up what I'm putting down, you get what I mean. All right. So these people are able to get away with it because in the concealers, they have this, first of all, pledge to loyalty. So nobody's going to snitch. Nobody's going to say nothing. They're not going to expose themselves because they're a part of it. If you think you're about to go and tell what you have seen, we're going to say, oh, well, we got you on camera doing what you had to do X, Y, Z. We got you on camera doing X, Y, Z. So, you know, you ain't going nowhere. And you damn sure ain't snitching on us, not to mention a lot of them are under mind control, which is like, OK, if they feel as if you are talking too much and you're just unpredictable and erratic like Kanye, they're going to clone you. They're going to get rid of you altogether and just get a more docile version of you. But if you just may be a little bit of a risk or all of them really get under mind control because they need to ensure that they are using these people to influence and i'm not trying to get too quick into the second um uh, you know second topic but that's definitely what we're going to be talking about it's just that they know that these people are necessary to influence and to lead the children and the people and the masses so they use them to 
send perverted messages to get in people's head in the wrong way. And don't get me wrong, it's nothing wrong with sexual music and stuff. It's nothing wrong with a woman comfortable in her body. I am the clear, you know, obvious representation of that. I promote sexual liberation for women in a healthy way where they are not just, you know, running off and having a bunch of sex with people who don't care about them. More so conserving your energy, but also not feeling shame for having sex and stuff. So the thing with them is they'll take something that we are insecure about as far as like, oh, we're insecure about as women, how much men have shamed us for having sex. And they will give us women who try to tell us to go against that, but to the extreme, right? So then they're like, yeah, fuck men. They make us do this. They don't They don't like when we dress like this. So how about we just be naked? How about we do this? How about we fuck all the niggas? We don't care how much they call us a hoe. How about we just have sex, sex, sex? And it's like, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. We can still rebel against misogyny and not like destruct ourselves at the same time. If you get what I'm saying, like they're making us self-destruct thinking that we are proving a point. But in reality, we're making ourselves just you know we're really playing ourselves in the end of it so it's like the influencers in our society are very powerful because they hold the ability to manipulate the masses and make them do what they say do so this is why people who have money and who have a lot of status and stuff like that and a lot of they're very resourceful they're surrounded by enablers and yes men, which is why, like I said, it gives room for them to just get this inflated ass ego, think they can do no wrong. And even if they know they're wrong, they have people around them who aren't going to tell them. They have people around them who aren't going to check them. And they have people around them who are just going to probably encourage the shit just because they really want them to self-destruct or they're too scared. Honestly, y'all, I forgot where I was at. My cousin came and I got like thrown off. But yeah, I just know I was saying that nobody checks these people. And so it's like when you do, everyone's just like awkwardly silent. They don't stand up for you or nothing because they're afraid if they stand up for you, then that person's going to turn on them too. So they like, well, let me just be quiet and not say nothing because then I'm going to be next. So either you a pussy or you are opportunist. Me personally, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a damn. Woo woo. I don't give a damn. I don't give a fuck. Woo woo. I don't know if y'all seen that video, but it's funny. Now I'm not problematic at all. Like if you know me, you know that I'm a person who is very kind to everyone as long as they give me that same respect back. And the minute I pick up on shade, like I said in my video, I'ma throw the whole tree. Because why are you trying to be passive about it? Why are you trying to throw subliminals? Why you can't be direct? If it ain't directed, it ain't respected. But I know one thing, like Keila said, you don't have to like me. You don't even have to love me. But you will respect me. Okay. So I just think like this is the thing that goes on and this is why people are able to get away with so much is because everyone just keeps quiet and says nothing. Like I think back to the Aaliyah situation so often and I feel like the fact that she was able to be manipulated so much by these men, you could say whatever you want. Yes, she may have been young and, and she wanted it or whatever, but honestly, she was groomed. Like, why the fuck else would she want it? It's because she is being pursued by an adult who has the intention to take advantage of her. And all she sees is a fairy tale love story. And her mind is thinking that she is going to be just this princess. This is a fairy tale love. Or oh, I have this person who's so attractive, who everyone wants, who is a superstar. And they want to be with me and they want to marry me and stuff. Honestly, the only reason why there was a marriage was because they needed to get an abort mission. Okay, if you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. But all those people that were around her at that young ass age, other friends, other friends of him, R. Kelly, like, you know, other people who were in the studio who witnessed it happening. Also, I believe there was like on the Surviving R. Kelly documentary, one of the girls were talking about how they were having sex in the booth while other people were there. And it's like, I'm not going to say like other people were watching, but 
people knew what was going on it wasn't a secret they were very much together but no one said anything because they're a scared or b they don't want to get kicked out of the little group and they don't want to lose that connection so they put too much emphasis or they put too much importance on keeping that connection rather than keeping it real so they'll watch this fucking girl get groomed and manipulated and maybe even abused but never say anything how do you think abusive men go on for so long and certain people they will do that shit in front of because they know they're not gonna say nothing Some of these people will even go as far as helping them cover it up. And it's people on that show, Surviving R. Kelly, who have literally came to talk about it years later, of course, saying, yeah, I was his main man. I was his bodyguard. I was X, Y, Z. And I seen everything and I didn't say nothing. And I feel bad that I didn't say nothing. It's like, well, that's too darn bad. Because, nigga, what the fuck is you going to do now? What is going to be done about it now? It don't really make a difference at this point. So yeah of course guilt hits years later but i mean you knew what you were doing in the moment you you knew you felt guilty in the moment you just ain't say shit because you were trying to be loyal to somebody who clearly has no moral compass all right so it could also be a detriment for celebrities and this is why so many celebrities feel so like around people and not lonely but alone well they're not alone but they feel lonely they always have people around them, but the people don't really know them. They're just there because they want something. They always just, like I said, yes, men. I'm the type of person where if I get big, I don't want people around me who always telling me, yes, girl, you look good. Yes, girl, this, knowing I look a hot ass mess just because they don't want me to get mad or they don't want to tell me when I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing because they're afraid I'm going to get mad. Like, if you don't have people around you who hold you accountable, you really got fake ass people in your circle. And that's the reason why I keep it small. I don't need no fakeness. I need realness all up and through this bitch. It may feel like all these people are around them, but no one knows the real them. No one has their best interest. Everyone's just looking out for themselves. Everybody's trying to find something that they can get out of the situation. And so whenever they see that people being destructive, sometimes they want that person to destruct themselves because then they can take their spot they feel or they can in some way benefit from their downfall some people will be around you and plotting your downfall acting as if they're your support and that's the reason why they feel so lonely because they have a hard time trusting people but these people can also be doing things like drugs and harmful habits like i was saying and putting themselves into toxic situations and cycles no one will say anything because they're just afraid like oh my god like if this person gets mad and cuts me off like they could be Let's say they have a drinking problem. They're always getting extremely drunk and belligerent, mixing that with narcotics and just doing a bunch of dangerous shit. People around them are like, yeah, get lit. Let's go. Turn me up. Like, um, no, this is a death wish and you need to relax because that's not good for you. You know what I'm saying? And, and if, even if I don't make an initial comment, I'm not going to, you know, agree and hype you up knowing that I can see that this is wrong. I'm not going to approve of that shit. I'm not going to, you know, second that shit or nothing. You on your own. And if I feel strongly enough to tell you, like, uh, that ain't it, especially if it's something that's, like, really detrimental to their life or that's just really wrong, period. I'm going to say something because I'm not going to be around people who just do whatever the fuck they want and think they don't have to answer to nobody. Even if you're not spiritual, you can still have, I mean, even if you're not religious, you can still have a moral code. And I talked about this on my first episode. I'm like, why do people wait for there to be a rule that you have to be a good person for you to do it? So you only are a good person because the Bible told you to do so. So you automatically think that whenever someone doesn't have rules to follow, that they don't naturally have ethics or things that they follow and abide by. I probably have a stronger moral compass than a lot of Christians because they really think that they could just go pray off whatever they do and it just dissolves. The same people who judge people for being homosexual, for playing with tarot cards, for knowing more about their life in the world and thinking outside of the box. The same people who judge people for doing those things 
want to slide over the coveting part of the Bible where it says you should not covet. Matter of fact, that ain't just a little tiny scripture, baby. That's a commandment. You X that one out. You forgot that one, huh? Be so quick to talk about how you should honor thy mother and thy father. But they don't want to talk about the part where you should also respect the child. Raise the child up in the way that you want them to be. As far as they will come back and honor you for what seeds you have planted in them. And how you have nurtured them to grow. It's always using the scripture in the Bible for when it's when it when it works for you and when it proves your point. Let's not even talk about how they use the Bible to justify why Christianity is real. Babe, you can't use that book. Like that's that's already out of the argument because it's a part of it. You feel me? Like, of course, they're going to write whatever suits their agenda. So, of course, you can use that book. But. How do we know that that is not just some shit that a white man wrote a couple thousand years ago? I actually think that's what it is, but we're not going to get too much into that. Okay. Basically what I said was in topic one, in a nutshell, that these people that have power, status, and fame can be surrounded by opportunists, people waiting for their moment to steal their shine or to backhand them and people who only say yes and only agree with everything they do out of fear of getting re you know rejected and for not being you know the favorite because then you have these leaders of the group and you have the people who really just want to be the favorite and who really want to be the one who has the most affection like you notice when people get famous their friends will kind of fight for their affection to be the, the best friend, to be the one that they show off the most, or they do the most with. Like People love to be in secondary spotlight. So this is what I'm saying. Anybody will attach to you and your success just because being connected to you gives them some type of shine. And to also be the person that you love the most boosts them even more. So I kind of feel like for in a way I'm sympathizing with some people who have success and stuff because I understand how hard it can be to find genuine people. But also there are people who love it. They love those type of people around them. Oh, yes. You tell me I love you love everything I do, everything I wear, how I talk, how you just constantly throw roses at me when I deserve shit and tomatoes. It's sus. It's sad, but, you know. It is what it is. Now, let's move on to topic two. This ties into what I was saying earlier and how I feel like with influence comes great responsibility. Everyone does not deserve an audience and a platform. And it's made it so much easier to acquire that through social media these days. But the thing is that in the past, it was harder for people who really had a message and a purpose and who had things of light to share with other people it was harder for them to obtain those type of platforms and to get that type of reach because there were people, the concealers, who were hiding them and suppressing them as much as they could. When the internet didn't exist, anybody couldn't just go make a post. It was more of a like, you had to have reach within your community and be more connected to the people in real life. So it was harder for people to gain more of a like big following and to reach the world unless they were on mainstream media or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So it was smaller groups and smaller tribes for people like me who talk about things that the concealers don't want you to know. So they were able to control mainstream media, control, control the charts, control who has influence and power. Now we have social media. Anybody can. But that's the reason why I get shadow banned so much. And that's the reason why so many other amazing influencers and talented people don't get what they deserve. Because if you don't think they're still oppressing us, you're crazy. They will flag our shit for nothing. They are definitely watching. There's no way that you think that these cameras are not being, you know, watched. Especially if you're a high risk person like me. So... Yes, they still do have control over who has influence and stuff, but there are people who have been able to obtain a following and support and an audience by Internet and, you know, this digital age. But unfortunately, with that, like I said, being 
so much easier for people. It's hard for you to know who's real and who's fake. So many imposters, so many people who can do one thing on TikTok, goofy as shit, and now they have a million followers and people watch them. And again, what did I say? They automatically put these people on a pedestal and stuff because, oh, you have fame, you have followers, people like you. Well, now I'm going to support everything you do and I'm just going to be a fan. But you don't even know that person for real. And they could very much be a shitty person and just really hiding it very well. Back to what I was saying about the people who are suppressed and whose content isn't very, you know, it doesn't reach far, even when they are making very good quality content. And for some reason, you're like, this deserves more likes or this just doesn't make sense. It's because they are most likely being manually suppressed by external forces, AKA the concealers. Those are probably the people that are the most correct. You can't always assume that likes and, you know, reposting stuff makes the content good or makes that a post that you could trust just because more people follow it. Okay. Um, you don't have to always go mainstream or follow the current. You can break off and do your own fucking thing. The reason why most of our women influencers in hip hop are, you know, very risque and sexually liberated, but also talk a lot about sex and they have more of they lean more towards the masculine side it's more so because they are wanting to push that into our face that is what they want to influence us to behave like and to present ourselves like a lot of it is them trying to separate the men and the women the gender wars create division you know make women hate men and vice versa which men have already been fucking hating us but really women hate men because of how much they have hated us so it's just kind of just kicking in for us but overall it's working because the music is all about like i don't need no nigga i don't care about no bitch it's like you know everyone's mad at everyone because nobody is showing genuine love and that's the reason why there is so much of that clashing now um, but men are also not all men, the bad ones, the bad ones or whatever. They are now seeing how it feels to get that treatment from women, which is something they're not used to. So I will say that we have progressed as a society with when it comes to women with not taking shit from men anymore, because I'll tell you, feminine energy can take a lot. And it has been taking a lot for all these years. But it seems like we are all kind of finally getting on the same page and like, why are they making us hate each other and not us coming together and creating unconditional love and stuff because women are against women, men are against women. We need to be coming together in this moment, not attacking each other. So when you see me making, you know, raps and stuff and talking my shit, it's not to just any woman. Like I'm not the type of person that will go up to a woman and just start being nasty and having dirty ass energy and being just you know, real rude and stuff for no reason or having this God complex. And if somebody tries to say, I think I'm better than them, that's what they think. Cause I never said that, not to them directly or not even thinking it because I don't compare myself to other people. But if somebody tells you that they, you, she thinks she better than you think that bitch. If I get on here and I make a song and I say some shit and I'm spitting and I'm really going in on another woman, or another man, it's because they deserve it. It's because I'm talking shit about people who talk shit about me first. And I have every right to pop back off just as much as you came for me. So I don't feel no ways about getting on my songs and talking my shit. That's just a part of being a human. You gotta defend yourself and you gotta be confident. But that's not what I'm all about. I also want women to stick together. But unfortunately, there are some people who just can't get on that vibe. So they just have to nick nit you know nitpick at other women and just make them feel beneath them for whatever reason they feel intimidated or whatever and men do this too to other men but i'm not the type of person unfortunately i am the victim of those type of people quite often it's just what happens when you're very influential so yes again having influence is a great responsibility you cannot just say the wrong thing you can't lead people astray Especially like if you're a preacher or something, everybody should not be a preacher. Everybody should not be a spiritual guide. Everybody shouldn't be a doctor, right? Everyone doesn't have the proper knowledge and the proper wisdom on what to do about your health. You shouldn't take health advice from some people. You should not take spiritual advice from some people. It is important for you to use your discernment when it comes to anything. 
doesn't matter what it is don't just take what somebody feeds you this could go for divine masculines too don't just be eating at anybody's house because you don't know what that little girl did to your food it's more common now to be doing magic it's not a secret like it used to be so it's way more accessible to people who don't need that power another influential thing or another power that you should not be given to anybody just everyone does not deserve to have certain access to certain things because people can use it for good or bad and this is what the concealers did they know everything that i talk about and they have all this wisdom and this knowledge and they choose specifically who to give it to and they tell them to use it for bad shit or unethical things for selfish reasons like they use magic the concealers use magic and then they tell us in our religion that they force on us that magic is wrong or magic is, you know, demonic and you'll go to hell for doing it. The whole time they're doing it on you. They don't want you to know how you can fight back and protect yourself. So they tell you to stay away from it altogether. They don't want you to know the power you have to transcend all this shit if you tap into it. So they want you to stay away from it altogether. This is why you must use discernment and just know that you know what as much as tempting as it is to not go to hell i just have to go because i know i'm using it for the right thing i'm using it to help people to help my family i'm using this knowledge what they tell me i shouldn't be learning what they tell me i shouldn't be tapping into i'm using it to heal and you know help people so i guess i'll go to hell for helping people but i don't know it just is what it is <laughs> like I, I think that a lot of us are just again that's that fear fear puts us in a very low vibration it keeps us stuck for many of reasons so don't let fear control you and don't let fear change the way that you move just do you and as long as you know that you're doing something with the right intention and you're aware of like i said your morals and what you feel is right and wrong nobody can challenge you because you know what's your heart period so we're gonna move into telepathy talk and we're gonna get into this voice memo that i recorded a couple weeks ago when it was like a cancer new moon i think i was talking about parenting and how you know we should be mindful of cycles and things that we can get into with our parents and stuff so make sure you tap into that and i will see you in the stargazing segment i just had this whole rant about like parenting and everything and i think it's because of mercury and cancer and it's about to be a new moon in cancer i think if i check the chart today maybe the first day of cancer season in true sidereal astrology so i'm getting all these downloads about like how if you are a parent you should not be expecting to have a redo or a second chance at life through your child that is not what parenting is that is controlling and that is selfish it is not about your will your way when you have a child you are just simply being the portal through which another human being can be birthed onto this earth they have their own life, they have their own experience, they have their own pathway. You are here to help guide them and shape and mold them, but not, not exclusively to where you are the sole sculptor. They are going to, like in a way that erosion forms mountains and like things naturally fall into place. They're going to, through life's experiences and through natural time and evolution erode and they're going to shape and form into their own little delicate being you're just kind of helping that process along you are not the one who is going to tell them you must live this life you must have this lifestyle you must talk like this walk like this look like this anything like you are this is like i said not a second chance at life through your child the way that you can change and, and the way that you can help your child have a better life is by being the best role model you can possibly be being the best example possible and that doesn't mean one side or the other that means balance and duality and as well as changing yourself right go within do some healing if you notice things about yourself and tendencies things you've experienced in your life that you don't want your child to recognize or you don't want your child to inhabit then you need to go in and do the work to ensure that you are not modeling those behaviors for your child and you are also consciously doing the shadow work to change those patterns but there are some things that we should not force upon our child. Like, just because you like them or you want them or you whatever that they should too. And I feel like this kind of goes for women who are with men. Stop thinking that you have to become a little mini man because many your husband, many your boyfriend, because you want them to choose you. Y'all don't have to like the same things. 
You don't have to be the perfect girl that he wants. Be who the fuck you want to be. Whoever matches with you going to come to you. Okay? And if he's not the one, oh fucking well. Bye. All right? Because I've talked to multiple people before and encountered multiple different people and personalities and characters. So I know what I work well with and what I don't. I can blend well with many different people. But does that mean I want to change who I am to make everybody else comfortable? No. If you don't get along with somebody, it's all right. All right? It's not, everybody not going to fit with everybody. Every puzzle piece don't go with each other. That's the reason for that. But in the end, it all comes together and makes a beautiful picture. But you don't got to be connected to every puzzle piece in the puzzle. Do you get what I'm saying? It's still going to be a beautiful puzzle with or without that connection. But you're connected either way, just not directly. Ooh, you're not thinking deep if you're not understanding what I'm saying. Think about it. Every piece of the puzzle is connected, but they're not at the same time. That's like the hive mind mentality. And so if you want to get along in this world, just work with the people that you can work with and don't work with the ones that you can't. And if you got to work with them, then just continue to do what you do and continue to set boundaries and stay and stay at balance. Right? Because like I said, everybody ain't going to like each other. That's a given. And it ain't even like it's people being intentionally trying to be a bad person. It could just be like everybody just does not mesh well. Everyone's personalities don't click. That's the same way that in astrology, there's different signs that they naturally just form tense angles with each other because they're so different. It causes friction. It's not a smooth flow. That's just the natural way that it is. Like Aries and Cancer. So I think this is what Cancer's message is. I'm a, I'm a Pisces son in the fourth house, so I'm definitely the person to send this message that everyone should be able to be individualistic, but do not try to force people to be like you. Do not try to force people to look like you, to act like you, to think the way you think, right? If it's not detrimental to their actual physical health or life, and seriously, not just based off of your opinion, then you should not be expecting that person to 100% listen to you. Because who are you? And maybe the decisions they're making are what's best for them in their lifetime and through what they have experienced. Would it be the best idea for you to become a nurse knowing that you cannot stand blood and, and, and nastiness, but you're saying, well, being a nurse is good for the greater good. Yeah, that may be true. Two things could be true at once. But at the same time, this person over here, they don't want to be a nurse. They simply have no desire, A. B, they do not have the skill and or the capacity to even see blood, want to deal with blood, or anything of that nature. So that is not true for them, right? Do what's best for you in your life. Yes, being this, doing that, living this type of lifestyle, that is exactly what you need, is what you should be doing. North node, south node, right? Your north node may be somebody's south node. So what's good for you in this lifetime may be poison for them, may be a bad habit and a destructive cycle for that person. This is why I try not to judge. And I also just, you know, people judge me. I'm like, whatever. But you need to learn that what works for you is not always going to be the same, vice versa. That is something that people forget because they get so caught up in Aries energy. So Cancer squares Aries and it's bringing more of an awareness to other people around us, more emotional awareness of what we're, how we are different, our emotions, the fact that the Cancer energy is like the moon, is different phases, different cycles, um, it's different levels to this shit. Everybody's not going to be on the same level. Everybody's not going to be at the same frequency. Some people may be up, turned the fuck up while you on the opposite end, you down. You feeling like, bro, I don't want to talk right now. That's okay. That's why people think cancers are moody. Cancers are moody because they acknowledge their different levels. And they're okay with being down. They understand the cycles. They're pretty in tune with cycles. So they're not always going to be up, but they ride the wave. That's how they get to the bottom and back up again. Y'all try to stay stuck at the top. You prolong, you know, your your flow. You, you resist the flow. That's what Aries is. Aries forces. And I'm trying to learn to balance myself. But you have to not resist the flow. You have to be at peace. You have, did she just forget her dog outside again? It's almost like they want her to run away, bro. <laughs> okay, but that's kind of a sign for me. Because that's how I feel about parents. Sometimes they don't care about you because they don't want you to be here. Sometimes they just let you do what you own. Like, okay, it's a balance. Like I said, don't try to live to your parent, to your child, but 
like also don't abandon them and expect them to do everything by themselves like oh cook oh clean wash your own clothes like damn they're three but anyways that's a message for somebody but <laughs> this poor dog like y'all literally just let it outside now it's about to be walking around in the heat uh-uh come get your dog girl I'm like y'all need me to take the little motherfucker or something because y'all act like y'all don't want them some people also not meant to have kids because they the ones that's gonna get the kids that's not wanted so if that end up being me it is what it is but i do want my own kids it's just not right now i was also saying that it's okay if you don't want kids right now like stop letting people think that you gotta be a fucking servant to other people your whole life whether it's children men other people you could just live you know for you be selfish sometimes that's the also square between aries and cancer man i keep coming with these great points and it's just aries cancer aries cancer because sometimes you should be selfish and live your own life but sometimes you should serve others and give to others and dedicate and sacrifice for others but you should also be loving on yourself knowing when it's time for me time because if you don't you get too scorned you get too way off into cancer energy you start feeling uh what's that word you start feeling resentful towards your kids you start feeling resentful towards the baby daddy why'd you make me a mother why i don't have free time anymore please get your aries energy work out spend at least 30 minutes of the day alone you need quiet time when they're napping take a bubble bath do something nice for yourself make sure you spend time manicuring and pedicuring and doing things that you love eating foods that you love cooking foods that you love okay don't tell me you don't got time. I know it's hard. But, like, sleep if that's not. I'm not even telling you not to sleep. Literally. Sleep if that's what you need to do. Make time for yourself. Even if it's 10 minutes, meditate something. Because that's Aries. Bringing you back to your center, yourself. Or even do something of yours that's a passion and a hobby that you want to do. But I had to take the time to, like, have this conversation. It's how I sell outside. But guess what? Even throughout all the heat, I'm in my car. And my car has air conditioning. And it's a little rinky. But she gets me where I need to go. And in this little bubble, even though it's fucking extremely hot outside, I'm chilling in my car talking to y'all. So find your little bubble. Even if you need to go out to the car for a little bit, exhale. Maybe inhale, exhale some weed. I don't know. Do what you need to do. I'm probably going to have to go tell her that her dog is still outside. Because how do they not even notice? Like, this little nigga's about to crisp up. All right, y'all, though. Make sure you stay self. Stay self. I wasn't even trying to say that. I was trying to say stay safe. But, yes, yeah, stay self. Don't even let having children change you. Don't let that become your whole freaking life. Stay self. All right, bye. All right. So, at the time of me filming this, it is currently August the 15th. But I know I'll be posting this closer to the full moon because this is being recorded on the new moon. So that means that not this week, but next week is going to be posted. So you can prepare for this energy. Now, the full moon in Aquarius, you don't have to be watching this on that day, but it still can resonate, especially if you have these placements in your birth chart. It will be on a day where the moon is in Aquarius. It'll be opposite the sun in Leo and conjunct. The moon will be conjunct the saturn in aquarius that's retrograde so at the same time venus will be in cancer retrograde and mercury will be in leo retrograde now you're probably like this doesn't add up with what i've seen well in tropical astrology there's a full moon in pisces but in the system of astrology that i use which is true sidereal astrology if you want to learn more about it check out my learn astrology secrets video and also tap into if you're on YouTube, my other channel, Soleil's Oracle, to find it. This is going to be a very interesting full moon because things are going to be happening very quickly and very suddenly. Um, you may have a change of heart or mind about something because with Mercury being in retrograde in the sign of Leo, Leo rules the heart. And then Aquarius is kind of about the mind. You're changing maybe some of your ideals some of whatever you find to be socially important also you could be ending because full moons represent endings but also culminations it could be well not culminate like harvest you are taking what you have grown up until this point because it's full and it's ready to be harvested so this could be you 
meeting new friends or you're leaving behind a friend group or a social group or associations like you associate yourself with certain people or certain ideas and because people come together because they have like-minded ideas and stuff when those things change for you you no longer hang around those people or you feel disconnected from those people so maybe you are like i said changing the circles that you're involving yourself with because maybe like i said earlier you found out that these people are just yes men or you found out these people don't really like you anything like that things can be popping off within groups with this aquarius full moon now um your hopes and wishes because that's what aquarius is about can definitely be materialized there can be some social media fame aquarius is also things happening very suddenly so this could be something as simple as getting struck by lightning or um hitting the lottery it's a very spontaneous energy you never know what could happen here um you could just get a call and get some exciting or unexpected or maybe i don't know drastic news but it's a lot of breakthroughs coming through with this moon. So with Venus also being in Cancer at the time of this full moon, you'll probably be thinking about the past and freeing yourself from habits and your comfort zone that have been holding you back. So you'll really be kind of reflecting. There's a lot of reflection going on here with Saturn, Mercury, and Venus all being retrograde. I think Pluto is retrograde as well as, I think that's it maybe neptune so there's a lot of retrograde going on all these planets are moving slow going backwards and especially with cancer and mercury being in leo there's all this past and childhood coming back up that can with venus start making you think about maybe you know relationship patterns that you've seen in your childhood or from your mother that you may not want to continue on um it's a lot about analyzing cycles especially in love and also with friends maybe that translate into your work life so um especially if you're a woman and you feel like i should be living a soft life or i should be doing this like why am i continuing to associate with these type of people or date these type of people when i know that this is what i want and yeah also why am i continuing to hide who i am knowing that with this aquarius i want to be different or i want to be individualistic why am i with Saturn, why am I suppressing myself for criticizing myself so hard? Like, let me just be me. That brings a lot more success than you think because then you are attractive to what's real. And so, yeah, people will love you for your authenticity when you wear it confidently, which is why we have this Aquarius and Leo going on. Leo is shining very bright and they're proud of who they are. They're very confident in that Aquarius moon energy is um them knowing that they're the shit but also not feeling afraid to just be who they are now someone who actually has these placements is beyonce she is a leo sun and an aquarius moon remember this is in my system of astrology so definitely something big surrounding beyonce could be coming up although i know her birthday will be a couple days after this full moon so expect something about her to be coming out or big or maybe she's dropping i don't know but this is also a very prime time for people who have daddy issues daddy issues that have to do specifically with not knowing how to attach to people not like you know the attachment issues where you don't know how to let go the attachment issues where you have a problem attaching in the first place because you're always afraid of abandonment that is definitely going to be a thing coming up for you around this full moon with it being conjunct saturn the planet of the father and venus being in cancer the planet of family and the parents so a lot to unpack with this full moon i hope that you all are having a you know a peaceful even if it's turbulent around you day 10 10 on the clock and thank you so much for watching sticking around as you can see we still got a little bit of light left all right, even if you are having a bad day or you're feeling like you're falling off, you still have a little bit of light left, so don't give up, okay? Mwah. Love y'all, bye.